master of ceremony of indus valley international film festival season 2 organized by safach which is south asian forum for art and creative heritage in the next few days you are going to experience creative ecstasy from all over south asia the festival includes film screenings workshops and master classes interaction with celebrities music concerts and an award ceremony the most unique aspect of this festival is being south asia's first borderless digital film festival festival begins with opening film padman premiere screenings of rajat kapoor's kadak and himanshu malik's film chitrakoot river of love by akash khurana and first public showcase of documentary film on the mystic neem kairoli baba windfall of grace there is also an impressive lineup of films from other south asian countries the birthland and a woman superior of him bizli from bangladesh starring eminent actress and producer of bangladesh bobby anagat from nepal pankshu and suparna from sri lanka ho manjaha the critically acclaimed film from pakistan directed by asim raza starring mahira khan among the many other interesting films there will also be workshops and master classes on fiction filmmaking documentary filmmaking script writing and acting online live music concerts panel discussions and numerous other interesting sessions we thank our supporters gifting partner chaiology pr partner 1h media digital media partner noxens and startup news community partner network capital today we are proud to have eminent filmmaker shri r balki as our guest r balakrishnan popularly known as r balki is an indian filmmaker screenwriter and former group chairman <clears throat> of the advertising agency lolintas he started his career with mudra at the age of, age of 23 his passion has always been filmmaking after college he even applied to the chennai film institute to do a course in direction he was selected by mudra communications for the first creative training program by the agency balki was soon addicted to advertising his ideas have included daag acche hain for surf excel jago rahe jago re ads for tata tea what an idea sarji idea cellular advertising havelis tanishk icici prudential saint gobain class hamara bajaj britannia pepsi dent and many more balki has written and directed the must the much enjoyed chini kam which starred amitabh bachchan and tabu his second feature film was the critically acclaimed and commercially successful pa starring again amitabh bachchan his and abhishek and vidya balan shamitab was his third bollywood venture he then wrote and directed ki and ka his next is padman based on the life of arunachalam muruganantham which he co-produced wrote and directed balki also co-produced and wrote mission mangal where he played the role of creative director today's sessions will be, will be moderated by harsh narayan harsh is an alumnus of iim calcutta maika amdabad and nift delhi having produced and directed numerous documentary films animation films and digital films harsh is also the founder of indus valley international film festival so we invite mr r balki to please deliver your inaugural remark thank you hi uh, it's uh, indeed an honor and a pleasure to kind of uh, welcome you all to the indus valley film festival uh, i'm sure we're going to be seeing some really wonderful films from all across south asia uh, and i think it's a great time to have a film festival because it's films and uh, you know the moving media and the, the motion picture medium that's kind of actually uh, kept us going through these months 
So really to kind of see more of them, things we haven't seen before, which are not on platform, which is a great thing to kind of see again. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this week of uh, some wonderful films from our region. And thanks a lot to Hush for kind of putting all this together. Uh, I think it's not an easy task to put, to put a festival like this and collate films like this uh, at this point of time. But a great job, Hush. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the films. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your appreciation. Uh, we thought uh, today is uh, uh, Gandhiji's birthday, our father of our nation. And uh, we thought uh, we, uh, he always stood for weaker section and downtrodden. And he had, uh, his heart was filled with empathy for, uh, uh, for downtrodden. Uh, uh, so we thought uh, Padman is the best film to give tribute to Gandhiji uh, on his birthday. Uh, because it also talks about, you know, the film talks of, about uh, empowering uh, the weaker in the society who have been neglected. The issue which has been neglected uh, for past uh, th th thousands of years. So, sir, what, uh, what is your take on this, uh, 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 on the idea of the, the film connecting with Gandhiji's idea, I ideology? Uh, yes, I think, uh, I think more than the film, I think uh, Arunachalam Muruganandam connects with Gandhiji's uh, ideology. The man, the real Padman, uh, who has done this revolution. Uh, for me, the film Padman is actually a tribute uh, to a remarkable man. Uh, and also, in a strange way, a very exciting journey because it's possibly the first mainstream film uh, to feature a sanitary napkin as the main subject. I mean, that to me itself is very exciting. Uh, and today, actually, thanks the film. In, in fact, I would, um, uh, I'm, I mean, it's indeed a privilege and honor for it to be on Gandhiji's uh, um, birthday. But uh, uh, I think what, what is uh, really also pleasing is the fact that the film has led to a lot of social change. Besides the normal box office figures and success rates, what it has done to transform uh, actually either policies, um, awareness, uh, you know, this taboo factor, uh, what it has done to transform all these kind of things is indeed a miracle. Uh, so the film has actually had a lot more impact than just, uh, than just money or figures. It has had a lot more social relevance than most things that... Uh, uh, have been uh, have have uh, been feature films, so uh, that way I think it really makes me proud uh, that I could bring Arunachalam Muruganandam vision to screen. Uh, thanks with Akshay and Pinkle's help. And it is heartening to see it uh, getting commercial success as well. It, it it is being accepted. The film being accepted by people masses. So this kind of subject is not uh, not a taboo uh, anymore in our society. And people have uh, de people are developing empathy for such uh, such theme. Yeah, what is wonderful is actually the number of policies that have been created. In fact, uh, I, I remember the moment the film came out a month down the road, uh, the railway ministry actually kind of gave land next to many 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 railway stations for uh, villagers or for people in that particular locality to set up sanitary pad uh, factories. So it actually was a combination of both uh, awareness of menstrual hygiene as well as entrepreneurship. It's a great combination. You know, it's self-employment plus menstrual hygiene. I don't think you can get a, get a, a formula like this, which Arunachalam Burgarandam has cracked. Mm -hmm. So I think thanks to Akshay, the film uh, got a lot of, uh, you know, eyeballs. Uh, a lot of people felt comfortable. When you say pad man itself, you're saying pad. So therefore, a lot of people are, for, are far more comfortable kind of uh, using the word pad, asking for pads, buying pads mm -hmm. for their for the women in their family. So that, that I think is, is a great change and that is very, something I'm really, really proud of. How did you convince Akshay Kumar for this role? Uh, where, was it difficult or uh, uh, he took time to think about it? Uh, no, actually, uh, I didn't convince Akshay Kumar for the role. It's an obvious kind of a choice because he and Twinkle said, would you like to make a film on Arunachalam Murugan's life? I had never made a biopic in my life and I never thought I would. But when I met Arunachalam Murugan and I decided to write the film, to me, two things. One was, one was, one was, was the incredible nature of his life uh, and the really creative man that he was. Second, most important, where would I get to do a film with, on a sanitary napkin with a, with a superstar like that? It's, it's, a, it's a dream thing. So, I, so it was actually the other way. So Akshay said, no, you're sure you want me to play the role? I said, of course I'd want you to play the role because in my head, actually Akshay Kumar is a lot like Arunachalam Murugan. You know, there's a lot of uh, 
uh, big big things he says in, in a very very casual way in a very simple way so this uh, thing of the casualness of uh, achievement is something which i really found common um, between uh, the the behavior of the two uh, sir uh, there was a young boy in chennai with twin twinkle in his eyes and he wanted to he had the, he had passion in for filmmaking but he didn't had any godfather how did that boy reach this uh, stardom of filmmaking from chennai to uh, budra to uh, bombay like i wasn't in chennai i come to chennai for the film in shri bhai i'm from bangalore i was born oh, in bangalore sorry. all my life but uh, the thing was uh, actually thank god for advertising you know i got addicted to advertising and advertising was what i i still am in love with and I always been love with uh, because it's a thing that told me tell stories with a purpose the purpose there was always about somebody's brand or somebody's thing and here the purpose is uh, something very different the purpose is your heart your conscience your 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 uh, your thought actually so i think advertising taught me a lot about communication about a lot of filmmaking i mean when you watch or are a part of about nearly 2000 3000 ad films i don't think uh, there is a lot that you don't know about filmmaking by the end of it uh, of course this this thing is there's a lot to discover every day uh, but the basics you do get to know uh, in your so many years of advertising but most important thing is the communication is is actually uh, you know the writing part of it is something that advertising really taught me very very well Uh, sir your every story of yours is a uh, unique uh, very uniquely woven and they are loved and appreciated somewhere it uh, connects nicely with viewers so uh, also it, uh, most of your films are either on social issues or on uh, very sensitive topics such as relationships uh, do you think you choose your stories or the stories choose you no i uh, i think um, i'm just been lucky that things have been dropping in my head uh, Uh, on these rare occasions but i always choose a film uh, with with a simple thing would i would, would is this idea worth spending the next 2 years of my life on because in advertising what what you what what uh, what you you know tend to do all your life is actually search for a big idea search for a big idea so that has actually become a discipline for me in life also is the idea big enough so it's not just relationships or social issues that they are all part of the milieu and part of the environment But for me, the idea is the most important thing. So I didn't, like, say, make a pa with a social issue of Progeria in mind. I just did it with a big idea of making Amitabh Bachchan the son of Abhishek Bachchan, and I found Progeria on the way. So I'm not. I don't make film on social issues because any film you make today, you're, you're part of society which has got a lot of issues. So it tends to be. It tends to look like you're making film on social issues. My job is to entertain. My job is to tell stories. My job is to kind of paint a world that you wish existed and not that. Um, really just i don't mean fantasy worlds i mean even in small little things uh, of a relationship or a behavior or an emotion that you wish that you wished could be like this and not um, what it is uh, really because i feel i believe films give you hope mm-hmm. uh, sir your film uh, as you mentioned amitabh bachchan your film pa received many awards and uh, uh, especially at uh, the national film awards uh, uh, it received uh, mr bachchan Uh, received uh, best actor uh, the award for best actor i think in the national awards yeah uh, so uh, how did you approach mr bachchan uh, for this role and uh, how was your experience working with him second time because you worked with him for the first time in chini kam as well uh i just told amit ji about this uh, boy with progeria and he, i didn't approach him i just told him Uh, about it casually and he jumped to the idea he was very excited it is the the story is how we both approached abhishek and that was the story actually how uh, because abhishek was very reluctant at one point of time to kind of play uh, his father's father so therefore it took a lot of maneuvering both from amit ji's part and my part to kind of get abhishek on board uh, so that was what the maneuvering was and i think it's a treat to work with amit ji i think i don't think there's any filmmaker in this country who does not want to work with him it's my privilege and luck to have uh, worked in from my very first film and i hope to continue writing things that do justice to him because now it's kind of become like when we both kind of discuss an idea like, i mean he says no we need to do something else or i feel no 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 let's not do this kind of thing let's do something we keep you know pushing the boundary because i think we need to do something that we at least uh, find very different uh, in working with each other 
so therefore the challenge is beautiful and i hope i continue finding ideas for him uh, so in your film ki and ka uh, kia was a highly ambitious woman who worked hard to be at the top of her career whereas her husband kabir always wanted to be a house husband taking care of the house as well as cooking food for the family the film was quite interesting but in real life do you think uh, at that time when you made film uh, such uh, couple existed uh, such men existed i really don't worry about whether people exist or not i wish they existed uh-huh. like i told you i just like making films um, somewhere i wish it was like this rather than are they like this or they are even murugananam's film uh, you know it's, it's it almost seemed like uh, too good for me it's like i wish it happened like this i wish uh, you know a person loved his wife so much to kind of be you know so uh, uh, you know go through so much for that person despite the person leaving him despite that person i mean you can accuse that wife of many other things but he was so much in love with the person so i really found that quite beautiful uh, so so i think films are all about not whether there are people like that or whether society is like that or the situations like that it's about why can't it be like that yeah Uh, sir our uh, jury member supriti is with uh, with us here she wants to say something ask you something sure sure of course so so um balki ji i'm i'm like eternally grateful to arunachalam twinkle akshay you uh, for making menstruation a living room conversation which it was never it was such a hush hush thing so uh, i i really see uh, this one string which is uh, running through a lot of your work you know which is the uh, the concept of awakening people and um, when i look at the tata tea ad that you did jagore i mean we've seen thousand tea advertisements which are about feeling fresh when you wake up you know jumping out of bed and feeling like a bucket of cold water fell over you feeling fresh but you brought this new twist to the whole thing of being awakened from inside the soul reaching out to you know uh, a new level of uh, consciousness and uh, fighting for something i see the same kind of thing in fat man of course it's arunachalam's work but the way you wrote it and the way you projected it i also see that you know even in key and car like you said so i i see you as a change maker and this brings me to the big debate we have always had in cinema about whether film should reflect reality or alter reality what do you want to say about that no i think each person has his own belief about what film should be and it all comes it all depends on where you come from uh i'm actually bored of life so therefore i'd like to i'd like life to be a little more interesting than what it is in real life so therefore i'd like to make a few things interesting people may call it not non realistic people may call it kind of you know a fantasy picture or uh, you know too much of uh, uh like somebody called padman it's too nice of him it's too nice everybody's too nice i mean I like it to be like that. I mean, there's no harm in everybody being too nice. We desperately need that a bit. Um, and and I feel that each film has has a different take. Um, like I don't know whether you can have a relationship uh, between, uh, let's say, uh, in part two or a chini kam. I know the number of people who said in chini kam has given them hope or whatever. It was never my intention to kind of change anything or do anything. It was my thing to just say, why can't it be like that? It it yeah. is not about. affecting change it is about my thought of saying how boring it is to see what's happening around let me can i at least see on film uh, something which i don't see in life so that mm. is my thing and it's not that everything has to be fantastical there's a lot of there's a lot of reality that you will show in every film but reality with a little up up you know a little kick twist. a little bit of high a little bit of twist and that, that's what i like actually it's my personal desire it's got nothing how a film should be or not be i enjoy so, watching all kinds of so films then, i don't so the reality we are all grappling with right now you know the corona virus the pandemic situation which has been uh, quite uh, horrible and disastrous i'm sure that there are many filmmakers already thinking of stories based on uh, real life incidents they would have read about in the newspapers or watched on news um Tell us first about how did you cope with this? 
you know i find it it's it's very strange because when when the whole world is united by one thing it's like air it's like um, it's almost like your mobile phone actually it's like the internet uh, when when you kind of are united by one thing it is not so bad because all of us are going through the same thing it's mm-hmm. not as if one area is affected or another area is affected the whole world is going through something it's a very rare phenomenon it's it's something that i think i'm in awe of it's like how did we all it took a virus to unite us all i mean it's yeah. like it's a strange kind of and still we're fighting despite the virus despite those lessons we're still fighting on the most silly things in the mm-hmm. world so mm-hmm. i i don't want to watch films on coro i mean they may be very interesting to be made and i will watch them but it's not that i'm really desperately eagerly looking forward to films that are made um, about life in these kind of times because i think all of us have seen every bit of it read so much about it watched so much about it lived through it I don't want to see it again on film. You know, it's uh, yeah. it's one of those. But there's some great that... cinema, right? Ingmar Bergman's Seventh Seal, which was maybe also on a pandemic. Maybe after five years. Yeah. Maybe I, after I, five years. You know, yeah. maybe not during the pandemic. Maybe it just you live it through, and then you kind of oh shit, this is what happened. Would be a great kind of a thing. Yeah. So tell us something about yourself. So when when this hit. you know all of a sudden we were not going out to work and did you did you find more time on hand or did you find yourself more busy doing other chores tell us something about how you coped with this in the beginning yeah we were both very busy actually we were we had just shifted house we had to do everything on our own there was no help at all yeah we cooked a lot we cleaned a lot we set up things a lot we did all that for the first 2 3 months we were doing all that and we watched a lot we read a lot we watched actually the number of films we've caught up on we both did a bimal roy festival i had never seen bimal roy films and the kind of films that i've seen from do biga zameen to madhumati yeah. to uh, devdas and thing it, it's just mind blowing i, I don't know. Yeah. and i discovered two people uh, three three directors actually uh, one i had seen before bimal roy I had not and dilip kumar the actor i discovered uh, i was not a huge fan of dilip kumar and i became his biggest biggest fan he was he's such a mind blowing actor uh, and javed sahab has always told me that dilip kumar is mind blowing i always used to argue with him but i realized what a great actor he is and then of course i revisited all of sham benegal films said mirza's films and i think sham benegal to me has been it's almost like somebody is hitting me bang in the face it's that powerful that wonderful uh, a man who has made this kind of cinema uh, so many years back and we seem so regressive today when we talk of you know progressive cinema what we're making is far far behind what he's already made and gone on in terms of feminism in terms of women empowerment in terms of the bold topics in terms of adultery in terms of relationships the things that he has done we're all doing some um, you know really really basic stuff compared to the topics that he has said. and i think we truly as a as as a film thought uh, in in terms of film thought we haven't really progressed we've actually regressed a bit uh, after seeing his films Uh, and also said mirza i i saw uh, like a film called nasim i think it's one of the most beautiful films made i think what a beautiful film to make uh, mm-hmm. so these are things that i of course i've seen a lot of the series that are going around uh, you know i've seen many 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 series um, i think one thing i like a lot about sham so is there's so much research that goes into every bit of work that he does uh whether it's his television series or whether it's his films it seems like it's super researched and he's got all the facts right especially when he's you know working on historical characters there's this there's a lot uh, that he does which which is yeah uh, uh, you know it's a strange kind of thing because the films i saw from ankur nishan bhumika to yes. bandi mandi and um uh mamo um, it's just outstanding the 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 simplicity uh and and just such beautiful I, characters i still remember mandi got released when i was very young and uh, yeah. uh, shabana ji saying that you know she had actually been uh, told by sham sir that she has to visit a, a, a prostitution center and literally uh, stay there for some time watch them and she said and that is of course the kind of actor that she is also but she spent a lot of time there and i think somebody like sham sir would encourage that he would uh, support that you know unlike uh, some of the other kind of directors that we see in commercial cinema who are uh, um 
uh, more spontaneous and belong to the uh, belong to that school of spontaneity of course shyam sir comes from that old uh, film divide of art and commercial cinema sir, you uh, that so it, <laughs> yeah if I, if i may say so yeah. did you get did you see suraj ka satwa ghoda what is chance no. sir Th- that is that is the only thing that is left that i will i will finish off the sham medical series in, oh my god that, that is I, most that's amazing be- screenplay really yeah, yeah, yeah that's it's the most incredible screenplay that's, the, that's in... the thing that i haven't seen yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very seen, nice uh, a lot of the other i've seen most of the others but i've not seen that yes yes that's awesome i wanted to ask something uh, you have been uh, in the ad world for past uh, quite some time for many years you, you spent in ad world and in ad world uh, you have to convey a story in 30 seconds or max uh, 60 seconds uh, an entire story and uh, now when you started making films you had 2 hours or 3 hours so how was this transition uh, a creative transition were you finding it difficult or you were finding it much more space uh, uh, than you required to convey your story you know it's strange actually i discovered even as a uh, as a viewer and a consumer when you see an ad you know we have different ways of processing stories in different mediums when you see an ad sometimes an ad a story even if it stretches by 5 more seconds can look very very slow can look a little bo- a little uh, dragging can you imagine 5 seconds be dragging but uh, but sometimes a very uh, sometimes a film can be too fast even in 2 hours uh, the way it's cut so the language of processing things are very very different between even between a even a web series a feature film and an ad film you know i think there are three different ways of processing when you see a web series um, when you when you're on the ott platform i think a lot of times your mind is tuned towards the web series kind of uh, uh, okay. attention span or uh, or expectation of excitement or twist and everything at that point of time when you see a film sometimes um uh sometimes the film seems too fast sometimes the film seems incomplete or sometimes the film seems not fully fleshed out because most of the series have lots of time to flesh out all the characters and like it's like a full thali most of uh, all around you see so many kind of layers sometimes the film feels a little bit shallow com- uh, are you uh, uh, so are you are you tempted to do a web series or do something different in the storytelling uh, arena i think i'm i'm uh, it just requires a great idea i think to invest a year or something like that in a series and series is all about the writing and a lot of the series is about the writing and uh, to 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 have the discipline to write something i need a damn good idea otherwise i don't think i'll invest that time <laughs> in it i might as well watch things there are some fantastic things being made i might as well watch it sir web series the ott platform has shown some of the best writing i think i think uh, all across the world that's quite visible and i wish we had some of that writing in cinema Yes, yes, yes. So it is said that web series will uh, be a doom for star uh, system. A star system will end, and only content-oriented uh, subjects will uh, will work uh, uh, on digital. And then, so what is your take on this? Uh, I think we really. I think that's not true. I think um, uh, when you have great content, it will always work. Um, stars have a great value because i think a lot of cinema uh, in india has survived because of the stars it's not that uh, it will not work and i hope they continue working uh, but i it's going to be fantastic if the content with the stars also kind of go up uh, you know we have a strange kind of a thing of stars saying uh, no i need to appeal to a lot more people therefore everybody is trying to understand the 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 kind of film that i must do so that i must reach a maximum number of people and there you have the ott platforms coming and really experimenting contact uh, experimenting with the um, you know, content and finding it's reaching a lot of people and i don't know whether it's because today everybody has got nothing to do but to watch a lot of things or is it because people are genuinely liking a lot of things i really don't know the data behind that stuff so i can't really say but i don't think no uh, i think we need stars we definitely need stars for the excitement and the magic of cinema we need stars So just uh, day before yesterday, it has been announced uh, that uh, theaters will reopen, the cinema halls, multiplexes will start reopening. Uh, so uh, people have taken it as a very, uh, very good news uh, for our industry, film industry. Uh, how do you think? Uh, how, what is your take, uh, opinion? Because it's also uh, difficult times, pandemic times. Yeah, I think um, I think what's going to be exciting is. 
where are the films that are going to be come we start we got to start making the films for them to come and come into the theaters fast right. and i think i think already our number of screens that we have in india are quite less um where is the recovery model in 50% occupancy and i'm sure it's a it's, it's a temporary uh, thing Uh, for the next two three months, I'm sure we're all waiting for it to be 100% occupancy very very soon. It's difficult to make a film that recovers its money even with 100%, um, you know, and 100%. Uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, capacity. Uh, capacity, capacity, which is, yeah. which is allowed, 100% allowed capacity. So with 50% allowed capacity and with the fear that people have today, it's going to take a risk to kind of release. So it's going to be taking a lot big risk to release a film in a theater. Uh, so this platform I have created in this valley, valley uh, to help uh, filmmakers, creative professionals from across South Asia to connect, uh, collaborate, network, plan co-productions, joint productions, and present South Asian uh, uh, cinema as a unified industry to the world, so that filmmakers get uh, access to wider market. So I am talking about all South South Asian countries because there there is a cultural historical legacy. Uh, so, what is your opinion about this platform and uh, uh, what we are doing? I think it's a fantastic thing what you're doing. Uh, South Asian cinema uh, can be a great force because I think from every every country, I think from uh, uh, Sri Lanka to Pakistan to Bangladesh to everywhere, they're all producing some really really, really gems. Actually, if you see uh, a lot, and I feel actually. India also cannot be seen as one film industry. India is not one film industry. Right. The Hindi film industry is actually one of the smaller film industry compared to the uh, to the Telugu thing. film industry or the Tamil film industry or the Malayalam film industry. And I think we should actually look at South Asian cinema as not Indian cinema and Sri Lankan cinema and Pakistani cinema, right. but I think you should look at it as let's say, for example, Assamese cinema, for example, as Bengali cinema and Malayalam cinema, for example, I think is is world class stuff know, today. Man. I think it's possibly one of the finest. Some of the finest films are being create, created in Malayalam, uh, so I think you should project the the facets of Indian cinema, uh, mm. you know, in it or in all its entirety, rather than just Hindi cinema or one kind of a face like that. Mm. It will be a great. It's a great force. It will also help filmmakers to uh, learn uh, learn from each other's uh, ideas, their their creative expertise, talent. Uh, they can use each other's talent, and uh, uh, they can. Also get inspired from each other's stories, the kind of work they are doing. Absolutely, absolutely, and also it will help people also understand. Uh, you know, everybody wants to come to Bollywood, even from the other countries. They want to tie up with people in Bollywood. There are a lot more people to tie up than just Bollywood. You know, there are people right in the south. There are people everywhere. There are fantastic filmmakers, and a lot of them better than those in Bollywood and other places, uh, who can kind of really you can collaborate producers who are. a lot more film savvy in other parts of the country so this exposure to the uh, to each other uh, uh, is going to be magical mm-hmm. so people want to ask you something you know since it's gandhi jayanti today when richard attenborough made gandhi uh, this was way back in the 80s then there was so much talk and debate about you know why did a britisher make some some film on uh, an indian historical figure do you, and and we said at that time that we didn't have those kind of budgets we didn't have that kind of production capacity and so on do you think we've reached that space now to be able to create something mega like gandhi was and maybe even bigger and if you had to pick a historical figure whom would you like to pick so pick a historical figure it's a tough question but um um i i don't know i think um i don't think they've left anybody they've kind of picked everybody actually i'm just trying to think of who they've <laughs> left uh i think gorbachev is, uh, is somebody they've not kind of got really fully okay. correctly i think because he's a strange he's a wonderful character because he actually changed the world uh, yeah. what he did actually changed the world uh, quite a bit yeah but yeah, i've so done the world war uh, yeah the the, the the global warming as they called it at that time which destroyed the cold war between the us and the two Absolutely. Poles, right so uh, yeah definitely gorbachev and if you would think of an indian leader indian leader um need not be not political a... could be 
uh, anybody else i don't know i really don't know i've never thought of it i don't know the strange way i must think of it uh, but um uh but if you want me to tell me one one character that i would i would think is iconic and i'd like uh, to surely make a film on him is ela raja i think ah, i think of course. You, i would love there's to there's no conversation that. with you which can get completed <laughs> without mention of so tell us about that what would you like to cover in that film what no, no, would you I don't like know. to i, I just said like it to like portray, what would you like to tell the people about him no i just like to play all his songs for 3 hours and that's it uh, <laughs> i mean I, i just think that's his genius i don't think there's been a greater music director in this entire country neither will there be neither has there been uh, i think he's so iconic uh, and so brilliant his melodies will stay on for life and i and i think he's, he 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 created new things he was an original he created a new sound he created new melodies and he created so many new melodies and so different and you you will not get that nobody has will ever match that again so that that's another day another another story it's something very close to me <laughs> so i have i have a question for you sir if if you know if you can just so uh, after doing padman which is a very you know this it's this social reform in it there is a lot of it's a very very interesting film uh, from its form its conception its theme uh did the industry type cast you if it did are you trying to break out of it uh, how, how do you go ahead from here i mean w- what does it do to you after having done such an interesting film like padman how do you how do you see yourself going ahead hmm. the industry cannot type cast a film maker i mean I, th- i just think it's a film maker who can type type cast himself uh i just think i don't want i i don't want to do another social film or I don't want to do. Even when we wrote Mission Mangal, I wrote it for my colleague uh, Jagan, who had this idea uh, about doing a film on the Mars mission. If we fictionalized, that was just for him. No, I wouldn't do. I would do a completely uh, uh, fictional film, and I like doing only fictional films actually. So yeah, the only thing I want to be typecast as is is actually make original films. I don't want. I like to make films as a versatile filmmaker. Film. to make not versatile, versatile different films not yeah. versatile I, i don't worry about versatility i just worry about originality and i want i want to give back something rather than keep borrowing see i hesitate a lot to base something on a book or to base something on a short story or base something on any real life incident or a real life person because you've seen it you've seen that already in that life of that person so as a creator i feel that uh I can't keep borrowing from life. I need to give back to life. And the only way for me to give back to life is to write something new, or write write a new story or an original story. It's not that the other one make great cinema. Of course, will make great cinema. It depends on the way each person looks at cinema. My trip of cinema is to kind of create an original thought. That's why I hesitated a lot even doing Arunachal uh, Murugananam story because it's his life. But the life was for me what really pushed me to it was the fact that great life, fantastic life. but hey sanitary pad is the hero of the film with akshay kumar it's co starring sanitary pad and akshay kumar what an interesting kind of a thing and that was the kick for me to kind of do that film uh, but for for me it's always an original thought i would like to know be known as good or bad at least it was original at least it was something that hadn't been attempted before as a thought as a story as a technique something which hadn't been attempted before so i'd like that um, even to begin a film i want it to be original i want it to be hey has something like this been done before not done before if it hasn't it's worth spending this time sir uh, pc sriram is a well known cinematographer and yeah. he has been cinematographer in all of your films mr pc sriram so what is the special uh, creative bond uh, both of you share uh i think we both been mad people for a long time we've known each other much before during advertising i mean he shot uh, he's been the cinematographer Uh, along with Jendra, who did a lot of bad films, but beyond that, I think um, most importantly, he's the best uh, cinematographer in this country. I mean, he's one of. I mean, I can't even say one of the one of the. There are great cinematographers, but to me, even if you ask the great cinematographer, they'll tell you P. C. Shriram, because not because other people have not done greater work, but he has again created something new. He has experimented with things. He has he has brought a new language to cinematography. and i think that that is that is lovely for somebody to create something new and he tries that in every film he tries to do something uh, which is unique which uh, which kind of pushes the boundaries of something but he 
when he, when he gives back something to the world of cinematography a technique a lighting a thought or something like that that's what i really love about him and both our instinctive understanding is that you know it's so nice to hear you speak because when you speak you make uh, script writing sound so easy it's so easy i just wrote this film then i wrote that film then i wrote this film mm-hmm. so i'm very curious to know how long did you take to write the script of padman or of mission mangal padman was uh, about uh, one and a half months uh the first draft yeah afterwards you keep tweaking lines here there 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 mm. mission mangal was a little longer was about two and a half months because there was so much of the information and thing which had to be uh, but yeah basic thing is about two months average so share a little more with us like it calls for a lot of discipline you will set three hours in the day when you will sit and write or the whole day you just keep writing or you lock yourself in the room what do you do no no this is a very simple thing and in fact padman i remember uh me uh swanand we all went, uh, in fact we went first i wanted to see the location where will we set this film uh so we went to maheshwar and actually sat in the restaurant in the resort there and started writing this film uh for 10 days and then we came to the office and i and we finished it off so i like to type my own scripts i like to write when i like to type and my writing team i like to be i like to uh, like them to be with me uh, and they'll always be one or two people maximum uh, mm-hmm. who will brainstorm who will co-write with me but i want to be the typist i always type more because that's when my thought comes my thought doesn't come when i'm sitting across and just faffing when i'm typing so i have a very simple way to write that's the only film i think i've gone out to write because of the beauty of the location most of the other things i've written in the office sitting or in my home uh, i have a very simple way you start at 12 you do it like a daily day job uh, it's not like i look at the morning sun and i'm inspired or i write late at night no i work like a, like a bank clerk i kind of work from 11 o'clock or 11:30 and i go on till 6 o'clock and i wind up and i go i don't work on sundays and i come back and start working on saturday wow. and i do it exactly like that like a simple job because it's a job you cannot faff and you cannot say inspiration because i think if it doesn't come while you're writing in the flow the inspiration comes it's not like all thought through and you're just putting words and you're just typing it in. no when you when you when you're typing something in you're getting thought you you love you're getting thoughts and that's that's all a script is in, even if you live twice over I, and you say hey could i have done something better i don't know because that's all that could that's what was possible at that point in time that was the inspiration i had um and it could have been something else on another day but that's what i had at that particular time so it flows and and the only discipline that you need is you need to come back to it if you're not happy with it if you, if you if you're not happy with a page and i write with dialogues i do not understand the meaning of writing screenplay without dialogues so when people ask me who wrote the screenplay who wrote the story and who wrote the dialogues i i look at them in shock because only in this country we separate dialogues from screenplay uh so when i write with dialogues and i go back and i'm not happy i cannot move to the next page till i got that absolutely right you know mm-hmm. so maybe when i come back after end of the script and i find may, may find the page again wrong but at least at that point of time i need to find that page absolutely fine for me to go on to the next one the next day otherwise i keep going back so so i think it's a discipline it's actually great discipline and just uh, being there you know it's about being there for 5 hours being there for 6 hours be- being with the film being with your thought for 5 6 hours right. and that's that's the discipline perfect so nicely said sir uh, what kind do, do you like reading books and if yes what kind of books you read well oh, i love reading i like i like uh, uh, nowadays i read everything on the kindle or here most of it on, on audible uh, like i just finished the uh, uh, book on book by woody allen of uh, his latest one called apropos of nothing it's fabulous i read um, i read this uh, i i've just been hearing a lot of stephen fry right now uh i finished reading a lot of alan de buton as books and i read a lot of the besides the jeffrey archers besides all the other uh, fiction stuff i read a lot of other stuff i read uh, i i really am a fan of alan de buton uh i love I, i and i got onto audible anything that stephen fry uh, narrates i love i in fact i want to just go and listen to harry potter all over again in his voice on audible so um and yeah that's that's what i i don't i i 
I haven't actually physically held a book for some time ever since this uh, the Kindle has happened or the Audible has happened. Uh, sir, uh, as a filmmaker, when you make a film, uh, do you prefer uh, to organize workshops and rehearsal for your actors uh, so that they are fully prepared before they go go on a set, or uh, you believe in spontaneity and uh, so that uh, the actors come on the set and they give their first best performance? No, I think um, spontaneity can take preparation a step further. It can't. It can't kind of come or everything on the set. No, it won't be. You have to have a lot of narrations with your actors. You have a lot of chats. I don't believe in fully rehearsed workshops, but I believe in a lot of interaction, a lot of sitting down, chatting with the person, a lot of narrations, a lot of readings. Yes, I do. Over and above that, you can kind of once you are into character, once you understand the entire story, because most actors are doing many many things besides your film. So therefore, I feel that when when they get a fair idea of the character and you're just then you can hope for spontaneity because they're all uh, in the zone in your film at the shoot that's the time you will hope for spontaneity after after getting the basics absolutely in their heads so you know i we we always say this we can't let a successful man go without talking about the woman behind that success so i'm very curious to know i mean gauri gauri's films have also been phenomenal successes and very much stories about the common person and very endearing what is it that you and gauri ever argue about <laughs> or disagree that, that, disagree that's, that's a, the word no, that's a wrong question i think you must ask <laughs> what are the what are the things that we that we don't disagree about that be a shorter answer uh, we don't disagree about our cat we both love uh, a cat uh, actually we agree a lot on some on films mostly we more or less like the similar kind of film i like i like a lot more i like all kinds of films like i watch a lot of uh, uh, masala telugu films at times sometimes she just some things that she doesn't like sometimes but uh, otherwise most of the films we like we like together mm-hmm. um yeah, like like i keep uh, telling her the one thing about uh, gauri is i'm really proud is uh, i always say there are four five films uh, that i wish i'd really made or I've, i feel are iconic uh, in life and i say one is always my favorite which is moonram pirai which is the original of sadma in tamil i say mm-hmm. lagan i say satya and i say english english always because i feel they are classic films they are like these are the classic themes of humanity that um, mm-hmm. and classic uh, what do you say themes like not knowing english is a classic theme cricket is a classic theme underdog in cricket is a classic theme yeah. underworld satya is a classic first time in, is a classic film uh, again love story where you don't uh, where you really the, the where you which makes pain so aspirational is a classic like uh, you know mundram pirai so i i feel that these are the these are these are all uh, landmarks in and i'm really proud to be married to a woman who's kind of done possibly one of the most iconic films in this country yeah and i want to ask you so english english is is like something we see every day around us right why did anybody think of it did it take a woman director to think about this as an issue that she needed to bring this up i don't know what it just as a person i feel that um yash yeah, her mom was in kind of very Uh, fluent in English, and that triggered off a thought. Uh, but it, it's not about a woman director or something. I don't think she ever looks at herself as just a woman director. Uh, I just feel there's a certain sensitivity with a problem when you associate a certain uh, sensitivity with a problem. You 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 get the topic. You're you're more interested in that topic. That topic comes out of you far more naturally. Uh, so so you know, that they particular say, um, they say privilege is invisible. to those who have it and that's why uh, that's why i am asking this question now we have many more women directors coming in and ma- much more focus on issues around women uh, looking at things from the perspective of a woman which maybe a man could not see not that he did not want to see but maybe he just could not see that do you think that's happening or maybe it's just one way of looking at it 
I really don't know the answer to this because I have never looked at. Uh, I think we're all different people. Even two men are very different from each other. Each one looks at it from from either his background or his kind of upbringing or his kind of genetic makeup in some way. Uh, and so is every woman very different from the other woman. So I don't think this broad generalization of how a woman looks at it and a man looks at it, or how a certain person looks at it. Like she may look at it very differently from what a Zoya would look at it, or I may look at very, things very differently from what a uh, 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 Raju would look at, or somebody else would look at it, or or a Vishal would look at it. I don't know. I just feel it's not about uh, like even this particular topic. It sometimes I may look at it more more uh, in a feminine way than Gauri would, and Gauri would look at it maybe in a masculine way, or sometimes the other way around. So mm. each one is about a person. I never have understood this key and car business. You know <laughs> this. Uh, this entire gender business. I just think it's about different people. So uh, I want you, to say something. You cannot broadly kind of categorize it as male and female like that. No, you can't. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, Dear Zindagi has been a class. Uh, it has been a class film, Dear Zindagi, a cult class. So uh, now nowadays when we are talking about mental health, depression, we talked about mental health, depression years ago, few, few years ago, and it also showed us the path, how to deal with it. The unfortunate part of it is we still haven't learned it. We're still kind of tarnishing if this is a society. We're making mockery out of uh, somebody. If you just look at what's happening, you're making mockery of somebody who was mentally unwell. And it's like uh, there is no sensitivity shown. People don't even understand what they're talking about. So it's strange. We have a long way to go. We need a lot more films like that. If I may ask, sir. So do you, uh, does Gauri read your scripts? Or you read her scripts. Do you guys, is she your first person that you go to after the script? How, how do you guys collaborate on that? I mean, as partners, not as different filmmakers. How does that go? Yeah, we do read each other's script. And um, we do uh, tell each other, but we never follow each other's advice. <laughs> 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 no, I don't want to take that. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have Gauri here also, and then it will be sure. fair to ask the question. But, but, but I, I'm being, I'm being absolutely honest. I'm saying that um, uh, what applies to me applies to her. What applies to her applies to me because I think we're both a little rebellious at heart, and so it's, it's that's the way it goes. That's awesome, sir. <laughs> Sir, uh, today we are showing your film uh, coming back to Padman because we just uh, uh, have to. Uh, we have five minutes left, so uh, okay, we are showing Padman, and Padman has been inspired from the life of uh, Arunachalam. Uh, where you uh, had found any embarrassment among actors initially to uh, take up the characters to get into the characters? Not at all. Not at all. I remember Akshay, uh, he told me when he was to wear the uh, pad, you know, he just felt, I mean, we had read that scene so many times, the actor had seen, but the actual moment when the pad was being just worn, of course, uh, we recreated everything else. He said, I didn't know how, what a feeling, I can't even explain that feeling. It was like psyching. It was almost like uh, I am wearing a pad. You know, you don't even know whether you're uncomfortable, scared, what it is. But it's like a thing that you would never do as a man. Kind of a feeling comes into you. And it's a very beautiful feeling. Something that I will never maybe ever do again in my life. But I'm doing it for once. Even as an actor. So I remember him telling me about that. He said, that really shook me. He said, it was a beautiful moment. It didn't disturb me. But it shook me because I'm doing something really, really once in a lifetime kind of a thing, like uh, on myself. Uh, so you can, you can summarize his, in, the entire attitude on that one scene, because if a man can wear a pad, I don't think uh, he was even, no actor in that film was hesitant about anything. Actually, in fact, we shot in Maheshwar, which is actually a very temple town, and Narmada flows by, it's one of the most purest places, and we shot that whole scene of him jumping into the stuff with his sanitary pad leaking uh, and him uh, climbing the steps. You would be surprised. There were so many religious people, the heads of the villages, everybody else. They all knew what we were doing. They all knew the story and they all supported it like crazy. They all actually said, 
no no this is a cause worth kind of doing it this is not about all those blind beliefs this debil- this will not dirty the river this will not do all those kind of stuff we would like it's great to hear that from people you think are going to say oh how can you do this how can you do this particular thing you you, you really underestimate people you underestimate uh, 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 small towns and other the other part of india that you you always assume was something else so that was a great learning for us I forget the actors i think even the people watching the shoot were uh, even the location people there were tremendously uh, supportive of this film and how about radhika apte how did she react initially she said bhagi you asked me to play a character exactly the opposite of what i am i said yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not shy i'm not this i'm not this kind of thing absolutely that that's what's the point in you playing yourself i mean just play something you really are not right so this is the time to start the film but before we start if you can just uh, introduce the film in one or two sentence uh, just uh, if you can give, give a, an introduction of the film then we will start uh i think sanitary pads have never been a more beautiful love story i think please watch it it's uh, it's dedicated to arunachal murugarandam and all the men who are doing wonderful things for women uh, all over the world thank you thanks a lot for thank joining us thank you so much sir pleasure pleasure thank my you. pleasure thanks for your words sir thank you thank you for joining uh, in in the section thank you and you all enjoyed a lot thank, thank you. you thank you ashpai